In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts for penan with, by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of the Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection in, this, in his life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King of, of, in exaltation, may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately upon entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at the gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him as well as those following kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace. Our entrance hymn is found at number 498 in your blue hymnal, All Glory, Loud, and Honor, number 498. you 
us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us be attentive to the word of God. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
assembly, I will praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Passion Reading is found at page 142 in your Celebrating the Eucharist book, page 142. invited to join in the proclamation of the Passion by saying the group speaker part, SS, beginning on page 56. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said... When he was in Bethany, reclining at table in the house of Simon, the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. (laughs) 
they were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Where he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him, for that man, if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take it. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. And they all drank from it. He said to them, this is the blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with them Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not 
and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still, <clears throat> still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd of, with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. Then they led Jesus away to the high priests. High priest and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at a fire. The, priest, the chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard you say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will deliver him. And God with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maid came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were with the Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began to say again to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned them. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to them in reply, You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave no further answer, and that, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used, to, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, 
Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that, was, that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas, Barnab Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they only shouted the louder, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was, crossing in, who was cr coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is transla translated the place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sambakathani, which is translated, My God, my God, why do you, have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him, gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please, Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of the preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a, a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and the mother, Mary the mother of Joseph watched where he was laid. 
The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we begin the solemn time in the life of the church, in our lives, where we're invited to walk with Jesus. Now this is a wonderful gift, but also we need to put everything into it. If we're really going to encounter Jesus Christ, we need to put everything into it. And so one of the great gifts that God has given to us is the gift of of memory. You know, we can imagine things also. So memory and imagination that helps to bring about encounter. Uh, I'm one of 11 and so when you know there are times when we talk many times about the things that that went on with my parents and and the great sacrifices that they gave. That's what we're encountering is sacrifice. You know, First off, that they had to put up with 11 kids. That's a great sacrifice, and only one was perfect. But, uh, <laughs> but then from there, you know, going back in memory, right? I remember uh, watching my mom, who worked full time still, but at, at Christmas time, she would make uh, dresses for each of the girls. They all had the same dresses, the same design and everything else. You know. She would make them and then she would go off to work. And it was just this incredible gift of sacrifice. At my ordination in 82, we were at the reception and Father O'Leary was there. He was the pastor at St. Pius. And my mom said to him, Father, I figured it out. I counted it out. and..." Uh, in June, when Shannon graduates from St. Pius, this is all grade school, we will have paid tuition for 30 consecutive years. And in true pastor style, he said, thank you. <laughs> but since you're in the habit, you can continue on. Of course, she said, no, we've got four more years of high school to pay for. The sacrifice that was there, we remember that, you know, and, the, and the, the difficulties there. My dad, I remember as a kid, we had this, it was supposed to be beige, but, you know, something happened with the paint and the sun. And so we had the only 1959 pink Ford station wagon. You know. and dad would come home from work and he didn't go into the house because all the neighborhood kids started piling into the car. This was before seat belts, you know, and so you could have 10 kids in the, in the back seat and, and then laying out, you know, just piling into the back of the, of, the, of the station wagon. And it was just, take us for a ride. Sacrifice. When he could have said, I'm tired. I'm tired. Sacrifice. And we tell these stories and, 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 and then some. And it brings about a deeper appreciation. That's where encounter comes from, brothers and sisters. That in remembering those stories, we encounter the love of my parents. Today and through this week, we will walk through the events of Jesus' passion and death. We're invited to remember. We're invited to imagine. Imagine ourselves there. Imagine ourselves here in this passion narrative in Mark. When they speak, the, 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 the Gospel of Mark speaks of the terrible pain that he went through. Where were we? We're invited to stand there at the cross. We're invited to, to encounter him and all the sacrifice that is there. Because that brings about an encounter. And that should bring about a question. Why did he do it? That's what we have to ask. Why did we do it? Why did he die on the cross? Why was he suffering? 
He was God. He didn't have to do this. But he chose to do it out of absolute love for you and you, for each one of us. He did it out of absolute love. Because without that, without the crucifixion, without his death, we have no hope. With it, he has destroyed the slavery of Satan. He's destroyed everything that Satan had to hold on to with us. And then he invites us in. Remember in the reading today about Take this, all of you, and eat it. Take this and drink it. His body and blood he gives to us. Fulfilling his promise, I will never leave you. I will be with you to the end of time. And so every time we celebrate the Eucharist, we encounter Jesus Christ. He's here with us. So brothers and sisters, let us walk. Let us walk through these events. Let us remember what he did. Let us imagine ourselves there with him. So that his love may just be abundant within us. And our love for him may continue to grow. Drawing us into holiness. And remember the last line that was there of Mary Magdalene and the other Mary that was there watching where they had buried him. There's more to the story. There's more to this event. And so stay tuned. Be prepared. But walk with us. Walk with us on Holy Thursday. Walk with us on Good, Good Friday. Let's walk together so that we can walk together at Easter. That's our more. May God be blessed. Amen. Let us stand now. Let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of God. With our hearts set on Jesus, let us turn to him now with our prayers and our needs. For the Catholic Church, for Pope Francis and all leaders in faith, may we walk with Jesus as he is led into Jerusalem to fulfill the will of the Father and bring salvation through his death and resurrection. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the particular intentions for this Mass, for Jerry Trumpy, Mark LeBlanc, and Robert Ishaki, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our Archdiocese of Detroit and St. Fabian Parish, may this Holy Week draw us to a deeper love of Jesus Christ and a greater conversion of heart. Let us pray to the Lord. For the elect preparing for the Easter sacraments, may their hearts encounter the mercy of Jesus 
and liberation from the slavery of sin. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a conversion of heart for our nation and holy respect and protection of human life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For strength and divine protection for the men and women of the armed services and all first responders, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families, may Jesus Christ permeate their hearts and reign in their homes. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase of vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, especially for the Archdiocese of Detroit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Gary Hopkins, may they encounter the healing presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the hope of the resurrection, especially Albert Loeffler, Louise Collins, and Christopher Paluziciek, Palu Palukowicz, sorry. May the mercy of God draw them to the wedding feast of the Lamb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our personal intentions, especially those brought forward in our prayer basket. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray together. God the Father, hear our prayer. Hear us, God the Son. Holy Spirit, hear our prayer. Mercy on your people, Lord. Amen. The Aptory Hymn is found at number 478 in your blue hymnal, Return to God. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good of all this holy church. Amen. 
Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Right. 
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Fabian, St. Anne, blessed Solanus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now let's share with each other some sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. is found at number 684 in your blue hymnal, number 684. Circle in around. 
with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Just a couple of announcements. Uh, uh, On Tuesday, reminder that We have adoration beginning at 6.30 with the opportunity for confession. Uh, With Holy Thursday, Good Friday, uh, grab a bulletin, all right? Got to grab a bulletin because it's all in there, all the times. And again, this is a great walk with God. It's our hope. It's our salvation. It's what brings us life. And so I invite you, encourage you to come to everything that, that you can. Thursday evening, the Liturgy of the Lord's Supper. Friday evening with the Passion Narrative, but there's a number of things that are going on throughout Friday. And then Easter to celebrate the great gift, gift of resurrection. So uh, pray, 
spend this time before the Lord, fasting and praying. Uh, and you can fast more than just Friday and, and abstain from that. It's okay to do that. You know, so, so. The Lord be with you. And with your, and with your spirit. spirit. May the blessing and peace of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Closing hymn is found at number 511. Were you there? Just one more before you, before you play, Andy. Sorry, forget. Uh, the Knights of Columbus are here. Uh, they're, they're, have their, their annual MI drive, so uh, invite, it's a great opportunity to get a Tootsie Roll, all right? But make a big donation, too. God bless. Tremble, tremble.